So here we are about 50 kilometers outside of Geneva. Wonderful scenery and I have with me here one very special Golf GTI Mark 8 Club Sport 45. So we rented this car from Geneva and uh, have done about 3,000 kilometers on the car already. There was never an intention to actually vlog this car but I think it is something that is really very special and we were very lucky to you know sort of get upgraded. Uh, I knew I was going to get a GTI but I had no idea that they were going to give me a club sport and even more special it being a club sport 45 so I thought it'd be interesting to review it from the perspective of a Singaporean and I don't think we get this Club Sport 45 back home correct me if I'm wrong so I thought I'd give you a little bit of an overview of the car uh, do a little bit of a drive with it and also give you uh, my thoughts on how the experience has been with the car living with it for about uh, three weeks now okay and about 3,000 kilometers on the clock Okay, so under the bonnet, nothing too special, stock engine, EA888.4. Uh, but in this iteration, what you need to understand is that the Club Sport actually gets, believe it or not, 300 horsepower stock. Okay, and 400 Newton meters of torque. And that puts it in the territory of the same horsepower as the Golf R. So you can think of it as a Golf R, which is front wheel drive. Okay. Now, what else do you get on the Club Sport 45 that is different from the regular GTI? Uh, these 19 inch rims. I don't know if it's visible considering it's really very dirty. I'm sorry about all the dirt that I've accumulated on the car. Clearly, it's a rental. Uh, I should wash it today <laughs> before I return it back to Avis. Thank you so much to Avis uh, Switzerland for being so kind to upgrade me to this car. So, 19 inch rims uh, with the beautiful red uh, pinstripe around it. Club Sport. Uh, spoiler, okay, you only get this on the club spot. I know a lot of guys on the Mark 7 and the Mark 7.5 try to get these spoilers, right? Yeah, and the party piece is of course, there you go, Akrapovich exhaust, which I'll speak a little bit more later when I do the drive. Uh, what else is special on the car? Yes, the club spot 45 decals. There you go, 45 anniversary decals on the car with the honeycomb patterns. And my favorite part about the car, honestly, are these gorgeous bucket seats. Really, let me move this away. Get my wife's stuff. So nice to sit on and with the additional little details, okay, that you get, which I understand is a little bit different on the Club Sport 45 and the red accents. You also get the very special honeycomb pattern on the dashboard and you get the 45th anniversary emblem on the steering wheel as and well before i forget it also comes with a factory black roof so this is uh not a sticker you know this is paint okay so it comes with the black roof as well so the car is obviously totally stock and i just thought i'd give you some you know some panning shots of it okay, but really really sorry about how dirty it is okay it's on uh, winter tires right now so obviously it's uh, december freaking cold um, yeah so let's uh, go for a drive on the car and then uh, on my way to geneva and i'll speak a little bit more about how it is to drive let's go okay before we set off of course i'll do a quick review of the much hated interior of the mark 8 golf so just so you know i come from the mark 7.5 i have a mark 7.5 golf r I must say this interior, when you look at it, it's a lot nicer than what I have in my Mark 7.5. But the usability of it is obviously something that people have spoken about a lot. Really with this touch sensitive haptic buttons that they have. So there you go, you can play the volume by just sliding. Which is a nice tacky feature but you know having lived with the car for 3 weeks, I found myself often you know hitting the wrong buttons and you know if you want more review of this, uh, just feel free to youtube it uh, you don't need me to go through it uh, even these buttons over here like for the front heating and the rear heating these are all haptic uh, touch sensitive buttons which is this this part is okay um this one over here is you no know, these are uh, temperature control buttons these are also okay uh, what i hate really is this infotainment it's really 
gone back in time and they've sort of like made it worse it's you know if you like try to touch okay it works now of course obviously i'm trying to show it to you but i remember when i was driving and i was in italy i was trying to hit the apple carplay button for example and very often when i try to hit it it would uh slide up for whatever reason okay so i think the the sensitivity is something that they need to work on um you know people also speak about this gear knob and how much they hate it i love it i think it's very minimalist and looks really cool okay the car is uh, fully feature packed uh it has head up display i'm not sure if the camera can capture it you can see it right there yeah it's got head up display it's got acc okay so it's got a uh, cruise control that is uh, dynamic it actually latches onto the vehicle in front and i also love this um virtual cockpit display i think the resolution on this one is much better than the one on the 7.5 and it is fully customizable not difficult to customize i mean um, the usability of the interior should not put you away from you know wanting to buy a car like this I think over time you will you will learn to live with it okay, that's something that's that's not a problem it also has wireless carplay with the charging dock over here which is really very nice it only comes with USB-C ports and whatever usability problems you have with it they sort of addressed it with these little buttons over here okay which uh, brings you straight to certain menus okay like uh, for example now I'm going to put the car into sport Okay, so that uh, when I do the drive review, at least the car is in the slightly more aggressive mode. And you can sort of, or sort of not hear the Akrapovich exhaust, which is pretty sad. Because it is Akrapovich, but you can't hear it. Okay, so let's go for a drive now. Uh, and let's see what's what. Alright, so this car, okay, before I say anything else, it has heated steering wheel. Which is uh, very important in a winter location like this. It also has heated seats my wife loves a lot yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and uh, it keeps us nice and warm okay but it, ha it does have some technical glitches like for example i just turned on the heated seat for my passenger and it goes off so there are some you know glitches on in the system here and there which i think would be sorted out with the software update which obviously is this is not my car so yeah maybe avis needs to do it so anyway uh, this car uh, I remember when I first picked it up and I and I drove it out of the airport garage. My first thought was, this is pretty quick. Like, it feels pretty fast. It cannot be uh, a regular GTI because I knew that the Mark 8 GTI had about 245 horse. But this car, as I did my research, I realized it actually has about 300 horses and that feels about right. Okay, so it is quick. Okay, it does zero to hundred in about five and a bit seconds. Uh, and when you drive it around, even in its normal mode, um, immediately you will you will feel uh, you will feel the power. Very responsive, um, brilliant chases. Um, the brakes are fabulous. I, I know a lot of people who buy Golf GTIs will upgrade their their brakes and whatnot. But uh, really, if you, if you are getting one of these, and they're going to keep it in this stock form, or even if you're doing a stage one tune on your normal Golf GTI, this is proof that actually the stock brakes are enough um, yeah so it's very responsive uh, you can hear a little bit of the Akrapovich exhaust wait let me put it into uh, for all you people who like all the pop 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 nah, there you go pop 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 pop, pop. Yeah. yeah it's a very responsive car and you can you can hear it so obviously I'm going to stay within the speed limits because uh, we are in a residential estate so I'm not <laughs> going to push the car but um, you must know that I've done about like I said earlier I did about 3,000 kilometers with the car already uh, been around Switzerland the entire Grand Tour of Switzerland went to Turin and came back did a little bit of France as well um, and I must say the car chef's kiss and this is what I was telling some of my friends or over the whatsapp groups I was sharing some pictures of the car um, the only sad part being um, because it's winter, some of the places that had the nice bendy twisty roads uh, was covered in ice or it was pretty snowy and I am not experienced uh, enough to drive quickly in these conditions. I could see the locals, they were pushing their, their vans and whatnot, but uh, I, I couldn't. So uh, I didn't really experience that aspect of the car in a lot of the bendy roads, but uh, today seems like a nice enough day, so I pushed the car around a little bit. Um, yeah, and, and it's really, really very well balanced JC very responsive um, and all in all it ticks every box that you need in a in a car and that's why people love the golf gti so much right it's your it's your it's your one car that does everything very well okay and we have about 
one and a half luggage in the back. We are very comfortable most of the time. The audio system is great. The air conditioning works. Everything on the car works very well. Um, so yeah, that would be more or less my quick thoughts about the car on a V-Road aspect. Thank you. It's off. My heat is not heating up. Oh, it's off again. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh. Now, hit the highway. Okay, so how is the car like to live with on your daily boring highway commute? I must say it's very comfortable. Uh, it has the DCC, so when you switch the modes, uh, you are able to adjust the uh, adjustability of the suspension itself. So right now it's actually in uh, sport mode, so it's, it's a little bit more bumpy, but which you would see in the video earlier. But when you put it into cruise mode, um, which is you know the regular comfort or eco mode yeah it's very pliant very comfortable great fuel consumption i mean for a 300 horsepower car i was getting about 11 12 uh, on the highway and i was hammering it quite a bit you know because i was playing with the like i was doing all of this yeah, i was doing all of this like okay which uh obviously you shouldn't be doing um what else um yeah so so that, that is the part about the car um, so uh, as I as I close this this little review slash thoughts about the the club spot, I mean this maybe may not be applicable to my friends in Singapore because I don't know if we actually get this. But if we do, or maybe for our foreign friends who do get this, I was doing a bit of research on the car. Right? Did you know that this um, GTI Club Sport Forty Five actually costs more than the Mark Eight Golf R? let that sink in for a bit okay it costs more than the mark 8 golf r okay uh, it has about the same power but if you start looking at geeky facts like 0 to 100 um, and how we would actually handle on maybe wet or slippery roads uh, you realize that the golf r may actually prove to be a better bike um, and the golf r also comes with the akrapovich exhaust right albeit that's those are quad pipes and these are only double pipes um, so yeah that's something for people to think about but this really is for um, the GTI fanboys. Okay, so if you are really someone who's you know is crazy about GTIs and everything must be GTI related, I mean obviously it's a special car. It's one commemorating 45 years of the GTI. Um, yeah, so that's one thing to think about. Um, yeah, and the other thing about the car, I mean from a Mark 7.5 Golf R user, um, as, I, as I drive that Golf R and I came into this car, like I said, immediately the the big difference would be is that. The Golf R is fast, but it never actually feels fast. Um, those of you who own Golf Rs, I think you can sort of relate to what I'm trying to say. Like, when you put your foot down on the Golf R, even though it's primarily front wheel based, the way it actually manages the power um, is actually pretty different from how the, the GDI manages the power. So that was the first alarming thing. Not really alarming, like, surprising thing for me. So as a Golf R driver, a Golf, Golf R owner, I realized that the, the way to separate the two is the Golf R is quick, but it doesn't really feel quick. The GTI is not as quick, but it makes it feel quick all the time. Okay, so even when you're doing like normal commutes like this, when I, when I put my foot down, this immediately feels a lot quicker. It's more responsive, whereas the Golf R builds up the power nicely. And that I'm speaking about my car even when it was in the stock form so right now I'm running a stage 3 stage 3 setup on my car with Racing Line and you know Racing Line is an OEM plus company so it still drives very much like how it would be if it was stock you heard that pop yeah <laughs> yeah uh, how you would be driving uh, that so that really to me is the difference between the GTI and the Golf R I think the GTI would be a lot more fun to live with in a country like where we are now Switzerland, UK for example you know all the twisty roads bendy roads uh, I think it'll be pretty fun, uh, but the Golf R um, is it's a it's, it's a proper proper machine la. I mean, if you start to get very serious about power and you really want to drag race it, you want to put it through zero to hundred timings, or if you are doing like um, I don't know serious track days, but in not very favorable conditions, I think the Golf R will be the one to put in quicker times. 
but I think you'll have more fun in the GDI. So as I was telling my wife, uh, as we, uh, we are coming to the last day of our holiday and I'm about to return the car, um, I was telling her, you know, actually if I, if I could redo it and let's say I was living in Switzerland or living in the UK, I might actually be tempted to buy a GDI. Maybe even this one, but, but this one's pretty expensive. But maybe just a club sport, for example, with a 300 horsepower, I think it'll be quite an interesting day, day-to-day, -day daily driving sort of package. Okay, so with that, I will end my review or slash thoughts about the Club Sport 45. Um, those of you who do get a chance to go overseas and uh, rent these cars, uh, please do feel free to do, to try them out. Share your comments. Uh, those of you who actually own the Mark 8 GTI or you actually uh, own the Mark 8 R or the Club Sport or any one of those Mark 8 uh, variants, feel free to comment on the video as well. I'll be interested to find out your perspective as well. Uh, on how the car has been for you and for those of you who moved on from the Mark 7 7.5 to the Mark 8, uh, let me know too what are the stark differences um, that you've observed between the car but in terms of drivability the chassis and everything because it's essentially the same platform I would say it does feel quite the same but uh, this one feels a lot perkier maybe because it's the club spot see you guys